Let's address the elephant in the room. Smectite. I've been teased and ridiculed over my use of this silly word and my focus on smectite clays in my pottery. So let me take a minute to explain what it is and why it's important. So what the heck is smectite anyway? It sounds like something a mechanic would use, or like the name of a really over-the-top Bond villain. In the prehistoric Southwest, there was a lot of pottery made using organic paint to produce black designs on pottery. This practice dates clear back to around 600 AD and covers a vast swath of the southwestern United States. In fact, some of the most beautiful and striking examples of prehistoric pottery from this region were decorated with organic pottery paint. When scientists first began to study ancient pottery in the Southwest, they soon came to realize that it was no easy trick to paint organic material on clay and have it come out of the fire with black designs. In most cases, that organic paint would simply burn away, leaving faint trace of the designs that had been painted on it. The first scientist to draw attention to the mysteries surrounding organic paint was Florence M. Hawley in 1921 in her seminal work, Prehistoric Pottery Pigments of the Southwest. The esteemed ceramic analyst Anna O. Shepard came to understand the key to unlocking organic painted pottery. In her book, Ceramics for the Archaeologist, in 1956, she wrote, The most striking fact brought out by these tests is the effect of the type of clay on the permanence of the carbon. Bentonitic and other highly absorptive clays retained a good black under firing conditions that completely oxidized the carbon from non-absorptive sedimentary clays. If I can translate her words here, she is saying that the type of clay is critical to getting black designs from organic paint, and that the types of clay that work best are bentonite and other highly absorptive clays. The amazing Mr. Absorbency! Now let's fast forward to the late 20th century, when a skinny kid named Andy Ward was inspired by the ancient pottery of Cochise County, Arizona, and decided that he would try to recreate some of it. He hadn't read Anna Shepard or Florence Holly, but it didn't take an anthropology degree to figure out that organic paint would just burn away most of the time. Something special must be required to make it work. In most areas of the Southwest, the technique for making organic painted pottery was lost over time. But in a few pueblos in northern New Mexico, the process continued as it had for centuries. Whatever the trick was, those potters had it. Andy found the clue he needed in books at his school library. Talking with the Clay by Stephen Trimble, 1987, had this to say about the Pueblos that were producing organic painted designs on their potteries. The delicate white Cochiti slip cannot be touched during polishing, but Robert Tenario of Santa Domingo Pueblo knows of nothing else that will turn his organic paint black in firing. It goes on to tell how Robert had experimented with white clay from Zia, Acoma, Laguna, and Jemez Pueblos, and that none of them worked to turn organic paint into black carbon designs. The book also says that Cochiti Dam brought difficulties to the village's potters. The massive construction project destroyed their primary source of white slip. They now use white slip that comes from a dwindling supply at Santa Domingo Pueblo. This shows that the white clay slip used at those northern New Mexico Pueblos is not just any ordinary clay, but something very special. But what is it? With this information in hand, young Andy began searching high and low for the special white clay that would work for making organic painted pottery with zero success. At around the same time, on the other side of the Southwest, Clint Swink was attempting to recreate Mesa Verde black on white pottery in Colorado. I don't know how much Clint knew about what he was looking for in those days, but I can picture him driving his truck up and down every back road in southwestern Colorado, collecting clay samples to bring home and test. Eventually, he discovered Cannonball White Clay, which does a great job of holding on to organic paint. Cannonball is probably the most widely used clay slip among replicators today. At some point, Clint had the Cannonball clay tested, and the results came back as Montmorillonite. Let me be clear, I am not a geologist. I get my geology information the same way most of you do from the internet. 
But let me try to give you some geology information that I've collected from the internet that I believe to be at least mostly true. Montmorillonite and bentonite are both types of clay in the smectite group of clays. Smectites are clays that are formed from chemically weathered volcanic ash, usually in alkaline water. These clays have a unique crystalline structure which makes them exceedingly good at absorbing. Absorbatrix. Absorb tricks. Absorb clon. Absorbaloth. Absorbaloth, yes! This absorbency makes them useful in a number of industries. Cat litter, cleaners, decontamination, facial masks, and they are even used internally to absorb certain elements from the gut. I assume this same super absorbency is what makes it effective at allowing organic paint to work on pottery. Theoretically, the organic paint is absorbed into the clay slip and locked up in some way so that it is difficult to burn out in the fire. Eventually, that skinny kid grew up to be me. And eventually, I did find some white clays that would work at holding organic paint and turning them into black designs. I took these to the University of Arizona to inquire about having them tested, and I was told that it would cost thousands of dollars. As far as I know, the only way to tell for sure what kind of clay you have is to have it tested in a lab. Now, barring the ability to have clays tested, all I can do is make some educated guesses about what kind of clays I'm using. If I have a clay that holds organic paint, and has a high shrinkage rate, I can probably assume that it's bentonite or montmorillonite based on what I know about them. Now, given the fact that bentonite and montmorillonite are in the smectite group of clays, it seems to me that it's safer to describe these as smectite because that's a broader category. But really, the term bentonite, which was used to describe the clay slip they use at Cochiti Pueblo, and montmorillonite, which was used by Clint Swink to describe his clay slip and used by other replicators, and smectite are all, in some ways, pretty much interchangeable terms for that type of clay, along with the term fuller's earth. So it really doesn't matter to me what you choose to call it. I use the term smectite to refer to that magic special ingredient that you put on a pot that helps turn organic paint into carbon black designs in the firing. If you're interested in trying some smectite clay along with organic paint on your pottery, I do sell it on my website. I'll put that link down in the doobly-doo in case you're interested in getting some. Now, if you are gonna use smectite, you also need to know when not to use smectite. So what you wanna do is watch this video right over here, which is gonna help you understand that. Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you next time.